welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're very welcome um, here this morning. I say this morning, it could be any time of day when you're watching that, but it's just before 9am on uh, Tuesday the 24th of May 2022. And I'm coming to you as always from Devon in the southwest of England, where I live with my husband Nigel and my two children, Eva who is 13 and Samuel who is 12. And they have gone off on the school bus this morning and um, my hubby is about to leave too. So I just thought I would jump on, do a little podcast, um, always lots and lots to say and um, bring you up to date on all the knitting and all, all the, the yarny goodness. Um, as I say, you're very welcome here. If you've never been here before, I want to say a big hello. If you're one of the, um, I don't want to say old timers, uh, originals. <laughs> <laughs> you know what to expect and you are welcome to and I'm just so so thankful that people come back time and time again to watch this wee podcast and um, I'm just uh, so thankful too that some podcasters gave me a shout out in their last podcast I'd like to thank um, Mega my lovely friend Mega it's been a real privilege to get to know Mega a little bit um, over the last few months um, she is the Skeins of Dreams podcast then lovely Selma from uh, Little Big Knits. She also mentioned me. Uh, quite a few of you mentioned in your comments under the video last video that, that came over from her channel. And it's been nice to get to know her a wee bit too. And of course, my lovely Sam. My lovely Sam, uh, my favourite Italian knitter um, from an Irish knitting podcast. And although he lives in the south of Ireland in Dublin, he is from Italy. And um, um, I've just got, I um, don't know how to say it. I don't quite stalk him, but <laughs> I, uh, yes, our, I think it's a, a mutual admiration <laughs> society there. And his podcasts are amazing because he tells you so much about the part of Italy, See, Italy he's from. You always get some knowledge, not just from knitting, but from history and from architecture. And it's a full on um, experience when you watch Sam. So those those um, three podcasts shouted me out this week and what a difference it made to um, my viewers and my subscribers. And I just really, really appreciate the support that they gave me as well. Um, okay, <laughs> where can you find me? I'm Ruth Loves to Knit podcast on Instagram. I'm Ruth Loves to Knit on Ravelry and I have an email for this um, nonsense <laughs> for this for this podcast and it's Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com and please do get in touch with me in any of those uh, forums um, platforms and um, I will get back to you as soon as I can um, a lot of people email me about all sorts of things and I so far hopefully have answered everyone I can't don't always have the answer to don't always have the right answers but if I don't know I will certainly try and find out um, from somebody who does know and uh, get back to you. Um, I'm looking down as always at my notes um, and lots of um, zoom, 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 zoom today. <laughs> Again, as I said, I really am so grateful for all the lovely messages that you leave. Um, lots of um, this last um, podcast that I did, uh, there was no giveaways, there was no anything and people still left lovely, lovely messages. Incident incidentally, the giveaways have been claimed and have been sent off. Um, so that's always good. But yes, I just thank you for the lovely encouraging words. I am very, very privileged to have so many good supporters and um, I don't take it for granted. I, I'm blown away every time a message comes in. I really, really am. Um, so it's been, a, it's been an eventful couple of weeks. Uh, definitely after all of the uh, lockdowns and everything life has definitely taken off again and um, I've had quite a busy week this last week but I still got plenty of knitting done um, incidentally one uh, last Wednesday I think it was I was asked to speak at a, a ladies meeting in Exmouth it's about an hour from us and I went into the church and um, as I walked into the church there was a big massive bag of wool sitting at the front and I thought these are my people <laughs> these are my people and the lovely ladies were knitting um, little sort of tops for children in Malawi and um, just say hello to the ladies in Exmouth Chapel and um, I just thought oh kindred spirits <laughs> and um, so that was a lovely experience even though I'd never been there before I had to use a sat nav to get there but it was just you just felt at one when you went into the to, to be with those ladies just like when I'm on the podcast I just feel like uh, I'm with my people <laughs> with, 
<laughs> and um, yeah, it's great. So we have a bit of news <laughs> that um, we, um, Fernanda of Little Monkeys and Me, we had a lovely Zoom time. We talked about uh, a cal for about 10 minutes and then chatted for about an hour, maybe more. And um, it was just, it's always good to touch base with, with Fernanda. She is just great. That's another podcast, Little Monkeys and Me, here on YouTube. And last year, if, if you've been here for a while, you remember that we did um, the Across the Pond Shawl Cal because Fernanda's in America, I'm in England. And um, it was just fantastic. We did not expect the amount of people to take part that took part. Um, um, we did it on Instagram and Ravelry and it was just great fun. You, if you've watched this podcast for any length of time, you know shawls are my happy place. I love them. I wear them most days. Um, I just absolutely can't get enough of them. My my dad was saying, um, what on earth do you do with all those shawls? And then I just turned it back round and said, well, what do you on earth do you do with all your your uh, suits, ties and shirts? And he didn't say any more. <laughs> but we have decided to run the shawl cal again this year. It was just such a wonderful way to get knitters together, meet new friends. Um, and we just had a great time. And there was prizes, of course. Uh, and um, we managed to do um i think it was three prizes for fernanda and three prizes for me i can't remember but there'll be prizes for the chats prizes for the the fo threads on and other goodies who knows who knows what there'll be so we're just the same rules apply as last time um this will be running from a put the wee cartoon that that um fernanda did for me last time um and i think maybe i need to add another chin to that car that that um cartoon but no, not to worry. And um, it's the same dates. It'll be uh, July, August, September. I'm finishing on the last day of September. And if you can think any shawl or wrap, no coils, no scarves, but anything from a one skein to whatever many skeins you want to do. If you have a whip that's been lying, languishing somewhere that's less than 25% done, you can add that to the, to the, um, pile you can double triple quadruple quintuple dip into any other um cal that's going on and um but this time instead of the big long across the shawl across the pond shawl cal we've brought it down a wee bit so the um hashtag on instagram is going to be a i'll put it on the screen a t p s cal now it's cal with a k for knit, knit along but crocheting is absolutely what we want to see as well. I think one of the winners last year was um, did a crochet shawl and it was stunning. It was absolutely stunning. And again, if you've been here any length of time, you know that crochet is um, an anathema to me. <laughs> I can do one stitch um, and I could do a granny stripe and that's it. And to see, I mean, you know, no, you hear me talking about my wonderful friend, Hannah of Hannah's Happy Space. Hi, Hannah um and she does i mean the things she does with her crochet hook is are unbelievable garments toys um she's she was um talk, talking to her on instagram yesterday and she was crocheting sandwiches for the queen's jubilee so you go ahead and crochet but it is with a k um so it's a t p s Cal K A L and that is for knit along but crochet along is absolutely accepted too and again get involved let us see what let us see what yarn you're going to use really i'm telling you now so you can get thinking about it because i won't be podcasting again obviously till june um and um yeah just join in it's great fun i am hoping if i can get my act together to do a little mini podette as um is it martin from this 365 knitting podcast he um always talks about these podettes and um of shawls and examples free free patterns beautiful patterns that i've knit um i was gonna say way, ways to wear your shawl but i am not the person to tell you about that um and just maybe to give you a wee ins bit of inspiration of what you could put on your needles do you have that one perfect skein that you saw at a yarn festival had to have it and now you're thinking what am i gonna do with that or it's too good for socks or so we'll see we'll get a wee we'll get a wee pod podette up and going 
um, to get us a wee bit of inspiration, get us excited about, about the, the shawl cal. So last time it will be the ATPS cal on Instagram and we have learnt from our rookie mistake. We will put an FO at the end of that for the finished objects and we the, the ATPS cal will be for the chat. And then Fernando later, a wee bit later on will set up um, the uh, Ravelry group as well. She did that last year. She's She has the patience for that. I don't know if I do. I don't find it a great forum, but I know I know that's a great place for people to meet. And then if you're not on Instagram and you're not on um, Ravelry and you still want to be a part of it, do drop me an email with your pictures and I can enter them into the Instagram for you. And again, that's ruthlovestoknit at gmail.com. And... There was something else that I was meant to say about that. Um, oh, yes. If you're on Instagram, it has to be your account has to be public for me to see it. So even though if you put the hashtag, it won't it won't go through to um, the, the, the page that we've set that will be set up. So again, if you, if you want to keep your I understand completely why you want to keep your your um, page private. But if you want to email me through pictures, that's absolutely fine. too. I want it to be totally encompassing for anybody who wants to do it. Um, and to join in a bit of the fun. So that's the cal coming up in July, August, September, and be great practice if you're what if you are into the Stephen West mystery knit along. Um, it's usually at the end of October, I think, or thereabouts. Be great practice for that to get into the hang of um, knitting your first shawl, your twenty seventh shawl, your a hundred and seventh shawl. <laughs> And um, if you don't, if you don't wear shawls, somebody maybe you know will wear shawls. Maybe it's an art can be getting your uh, Christmas knitting in early. Who knows? But come on and join us. We'll have great fun. Uh, we have a few things up our sleeves um, to keep us going through the summer months. And uh, yeah, come and join us. And if you're not in, you can't win. And I always feel very nervous about the, these um, things because I feel if I'm putting on a cow, I should provide the um, prizes. I don't. I feel very um, odd about that but somebody was saying to me the other day that it actually um, if if small makers send you prizes it actually sort of showcases the work they do on your podcast but I haven't asked for anything and I've already been offered things so there'll be great um, prizes I will certainly pull some stuff from my stash but we've already had promises of a couple of project bags of some gorgeous yarn and so um it'll be good it'll be good we'll have we'll have um worthwhile prices <laughs> to send out at the end of, of september beginning of october all right i think that's enough i ramble for me i just want to check that i've absolutely done everything um yes i think so although i have an awful habit of writing notes looking at them and still forgetting to say something um my poor friend <laughs> Jessica of to the two sticks and strings podcast has been running a year long I think it's a year long um um cal called color my color my stash 2022 and it's color the American version of color and I have um forgotten every single time to mention it even though last time I even knit um a shawl to put into the cal so I am sorry Jessica she picks a different color um for every month and you can enter it into um, the hashtag on Instagram and I'll put the details. Col Colour my stash 20 2022, I think it is, or else 22. But I'll put the I'll put the, the info up and have a wee look at her podcast too. So I've mentioned so many podcasts already. You'll have plenty of, I'm sure you'll watch all of them already if you've watched me. Um, but uh, it's just great to support each other and to get involved in Cal's. I think that's it now. <laughs> My usual ramble. So I am a very traditional podcast. I just go the very traditional route and I can't, if my hands were cut off, I couldn't talk, obviously. But I'm all over the place. Um, and I just do FOs, whips, incoming, all of that sort of stuff. So we'll do the FOs and I have a few to share with you. Um, I'm uh, wearing one. If you watched last time, you know that I have had an addiction to a certain knitting pattern. I wouldn't say I'm over the addiction, but I'm certainly maybe getting into recovery. The um, the <laughs> the mindfulness shawl 
by uh, Made With Loops. Again, I will re reiterate that it's not on Ravelry. I have had so many people um, get in touch with me saying I can't find it. It's not on Ravelry. And I always put my show notes details down below. If you if you look, if you're watching on television, you can't access them. You'll have to go into your laptop or your computer or your, your phone or whatever. And there's a little chevron, I suppose, a little arrow that, that um, goes down like that. If you click on that, it drops down underneath the video, it drops down and that's where all I put all my details of the things I talk about. If I miss anything out, let me know as it's I'm only human. Um, but that's where you'll find that. And um, this is only on the Made With Loops um, website. And I'll put the details for you either, well, probably down below. And um, it's lovely. It, I've just fallen in love with it, but I think maybe I have got to the point where I've, <laughs> I've overdosed. But this is what I'm wearing. I'll take it off to start with. So, and I have to make an apology. I was knitting this one last time. So this is the um, mindfulness shawl. Just a one skein shawl um, with lovely Pico bind off. Look at the colours in that. Oh, love it. And this, I just love these. I wear them nearly every day at the minute. And um, because it's just so, I just love having something in around the back of my neck. And I just wear them like this. If I can get it back on. And I think I have now got one in most colours and most yarn bases. So that's that one. But the, the apology I have to make is... I um, talked about this colourway last time and <laughs> I said this colourway was Pims. Now, I know Pims is an alcoholic drink. I don't drink. I've never drunk alcohol. Wouldn't know a Pims if I fell over it. Um, so I just presumed that this is what it looked like. But the the dyer, the, it's, it's Wool Matters. Um, she's on Instagram and Etsy. And um, she messaged me to say that someone got in touch with her asking for the Pims colourway and she has never done a Pims colourway. So I went back and this is the this is the beautiful label. It's all botan botanically dyed. Wool Matters Fibre Company. And it's um, natural sock four ply. It's ethical, non-superwash, plastic free, 100% Shetland Romney lambs wool. And it definitely, there's, it's definitely a rustic wool, but there's absolutely zero scratch from it. It's gorgeous. But, and it's 360 metres in 100 grams. Now, I said it was called Pim's Dream. It's Pink Dream, which makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry for the... I don't know. And, and now I look at it, of course it says Pink Dream, but I saw Pim's. Pim's Dream. So this is the Pink Dream and it's just gorgeous. It's pinks and there's terracottas and there's rusts. And I just, it's probably, I don't want to pick a favourite, but it might be my favourite one. So that's the first one, Wool Matters Fibre Company. Then I have, um, <clears throat> now I did four last time. So this is my fifth. Um, and then, this is my sixth. Sorry, not sorry. And this beauty, no, oh, it's starting to pour. This beauty, oh, it's really good color. The wee Pico, I don't even, I block, I've blocked this, but I haven't touched the Picos. This is the way that they um, just come out. I just think it's gorgeous. This is, I have all these attached now and I won't be able to get them out. Trying to be organised and keeping things together. There we go. This is from Burrow, Bur, Burrow and Soar. Can't really see it. There's the Soar. And I got this. Um, she was doing ten pound skeins or oh, ages and ages ago. And when it arrived, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It's very hard on a on a um in a to photograph really true colours. And it's called Library. It definitely is called Library. <laughs> And it's merino with 13% Pima cotton. And actually, whenever I was skinning up the ball, it was sticking together. And I thought, oh, what have I done? Have I wasted my money? This is just, look at the drape of this. Isn't it fantastic? So that's three, four, four, five, six, number six. Love it, love it. So soft, it's amazing. And then number seven, which isn't blocked. I will hold my hand up is um this beauty 
look at that. So, no, as I say, I mean, it's not blocked, so it would go way, way out. And then the um, ends are wo woven in. So that's the most important thing. And honestly, I might not even block it because it's so squishy. It's garter and squish. And this one is from Giddy Yarns. Oh, with the hair. Giddy Yarns. And it is colorway The Daisy Fairy. And the yarn base is Superwash Merino Bamboo 8020. And it is just, I'm really, I said before, I think in my last, but I love working with bamboo. It's really become a favorite. And again, it is just gorgeous. I think for the summer, isn't that just lovely out in the evenings? Like I go anywhere, but you know, just lovely. So that's my, what, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. <laughs> I don't need an intervention. I think I am coming. I think that maybe one will always be sort of hovering around the needles, but I think I maybe have come to the point where I could uh, move on to another addiction and um, Made With Loops have just brought out a new, um, just on Sunday I think, a new one skein shawl so um, I might have to with lovely Gansey pattern, um, a um, lovely like Gansey pattern work on it and um, so I'm, I'm definitely going to have a look at that because I do obviously still have lots of one skein um, just random skeins sitting around so that might move on to my next addiction but I think I'm coming to the end of this one although it's been absolutely fantastic when my sock mojo was gone these just filled just were, were brilliant and then my um as I'd said my sock mojo was gone oh but I got so fed up every time I opened the drawer where my um whips are saying this these this bag sitting that I just thought pot I'm gonna finish these so I finished these are these are the magic socks I've talked about so much um and uh you think magic socks what magic socks if you haven't been here um I'll show you the pattern it is absolutely pouring outside now so the cut the light might go a bit so this is the pattern this is a free pattern at Christmas I think it was given out to a lot of yarn shops and if you bought this this um yarn um from Winwick Mom and um West Yorkshire Spinners and um I was in my knit group one day and the owner of the yarn shop the woolly beater in O'Campton have to get it in every podcast and um she came upstairs and she was knitting a pair of socks and I thought oh those are beautiful and then she showed me the pattern and I was like uh you sure that's that pattern and these are, um, by, as I say, by Winwick Mum. They're called Twinkle Toes, I suppose, from the, because it was twinkly, um, Stellina sock yarn. I want to get a picture that I can show. So this is the, these are the socks. Okay. I'm being very honest, I wouldn't have knit them if I hadn't have seen the sample. And I always say, yarn shop owners, um, people going to, um, the yarn shows sample sample samples because again you can see a wee bit of the of the pattern but it's not standing out greatly well this is the this is the finished um object oh not myself out look at those aren't those beautiful you would never have known well i wouldn't maybe i'm slow but you would never have known that those came from that pattern. Look at the details. She even did the, let me take it off the sock blocker. That one's still a bit dumb. She even, the detail of the, um, get up in the right way. Detail of the heel even that goes right down from the leg. Look at that. See it? And then, try not to put this in front of my mouth, sorry. Then the beautiful mock cables. And then the front. You can hear the rain. Beautiful. I am blown away by them, but they were sitting for quite some time. Not touched. Put this down without clinking everywhere. They were sitting for some time, not touched. Um, and I just thought, oh, just get them out and do them. And um, so I do have the two. <laughs> and um, it's a beautiful pattern if you want to have a go at it. Um, but it's definitely from first sight you would never never think that this hang on to we get let's see if the, we can do this you would never think that that was this 
but I am chuffed with them and of course I need to let you know the name of the of the yarn I have these all together in a little clip and it won't come out so this grey yarn is the my yarn place and I think I've said before it was a colourway pebble but it's absolutely pebble just the superwash merino nylon and I had about 20 because I did the whole thing you know in the one colour I don't think it would have looked good if I had of um you know changed the heel or anything um because I did the whole thing there's only about 25 26 grams left um of this so that'll just go into my my mini stash so that's my yarn place and these are finally off the needles for my sock mojo may be coming back I'm not I'm not um committing to anything but they're so really lovely I love them so that's just pop them down the floor and then my last finished object is a test knit and it was um it's for vert and rose i'm sure that's not how the french say it but v-e-r-t and rose lovely alex and um she is a very very new designer she i think she's got two other um designs out but equally as beautiful as this one and this is the isa ice isa cardigan i z a i'm gonna to have to ask her if it's isa or isa i'm sure it sounds much nicer in her accent and this is my finished object and I've pinned, I've pinned, put, put, I haven't put buttons on it so I've just put um, stitch markers to keep it closed. That'll do my. <laughs> so, oh the smell, I can't, sorry, I keep saying about the smell every time, I don't know how to do this, every time I show it. So this is the, the Issa cardigan. Um, my husband, when I was when I was blocking it, my husband said, "Oh, what's that smell?" I said, "That's this lovely woolly sheep smell." Oh, put that in another room. So I think we have to divorce. I think that's you know he doesn't like the smell of wool. I'm I'm sorry, I can't live with it. I can't be your friend even. No, I'm joking. So this is the beautiful. I can't get it. Which way did it? Everybody just hold it like that. Gorgeous pattern. Just down the front just plain at the back and then these um lovely long cuffs sorry if you can hear that rain it's absolutely torrential and um really long cuffs now um the only thing obviously it's a test knit and if you do test knits you have to be willing to find the mistakes you have to be willing to wait um while those mistakes are corrected um but it was such a lovely test group we all sort of helped each other and then um alex obviously dipped in and out and um there was a few things that did uh, did definitely need change but that's why you do a test knit that's why um you commit to a test knit you know it's not just going to be a lovely free sailing knit but this this um the only thing um i never i never button my cardigan so um i won't be i probably i'll put buttons on but i won't i won't be buttoning it you can see it there maybe it was better without those on it is it um and then the other thing was the sleeves. Now, if you look, I'll put a picture uh, on the screen of her original. If you look at that, um, really sort of puffy sleeves. Now, I have a lot of muscle on my upper arm. It's all muscle, nothing else. <laughs> so sleeves are often a wee bit difficult for me. And these were a pickup a pick stitch sleeve. You know, it wasn't a, wasn't a, um, you didn't hold stitches on a, on a thread or anything. And um, I didn't like the number of stitches that I had to pick up. I'm making a mess of this. The number of stitches that I had to pick up for my size um, would have been every single stitch and would have been very sort of, I didn't like the look of it, put it that way. So I picked up a few less stitches, but it's not that, it doesn't have that nice big look. It is neat on my arm. And there's a few other testers have have the same but it's it certainly fits fits well. It comes to just at the top. I knit it just to the top of my hip. I know other testers knit it right down over their bottom. I mean that's you can knit whatever you want. Um, but that's can we get that as can I can I get that as my thumbnail? <laughs> um, but that is the Issa cardigan, and um, I just love it. Now obviously this time of the year, despite a dull wet day, it is still I well I think relatively um warm. So, oh, that's better. Not better. I really want you to see the glory of it. Anyway, and then 
the mock cable down there it's just beautiful too so i'm not sure when she's going to um publish this there's a few wee formatting things and some people haven't finished yet and but um but it's absolutely recommend it when she does get it published and um yeah i really it's gonna be such a practical um um item for the winter next year or the autumn next year i wear far more cardigans than sweaters and i was thrilled to be part of it she she was just a lovely person to work with so the yarn is good old faithful if you watch any british podcaster you'll know about woolly knit and woolly knit were having a sale ages off oh i don't know when a year ago more than a year ago and they were selling off bags of this yarn here diggle diggle dk 50 gram balls from woolly knit pure wool dk nap and you can see the wee the wee bit of nap in every so often and this colorway is rust nap um and i got 10 of these for 10 10 no 9.99 pure wool 9.99 and i only used i had about two two and a quarter two and three quarters left over for my size i, I knit a 2x and um i only used written it down where did i put it <clears throat> i've only used 904 grams or no 904 meters <laughs> four grams, 904 meters for 2xl so it's a great pattern um and um i'll show you again the my nose is itchy from this wool the diggle dk um now they have it in they still have this um in but not in this format it's in like a flat ball and it's a bit it's more expensive but it was beautiful to work with as i say the smell is divine no matter what my husband says and i thoroughly enjoyed working with it and um yeah i really use very little of it now i could have made the i could have made the sleeves wider i could have um made you know gone on down and knit probably i would say even three or four more inches i could have easily done that um I made it a longer cardigan but i just because i wear a lot of dresses um it just it sits really really well and um i really impressed with this it comes up beautifully it blocks really soft it's not itchy even though it's 100 percent wool and yeah i really do i mean most of us do recommend woolly knit the best of times but one thing i did want to say was that um i am not a big swatcher i swatch I swatch if it's for someone, I swatch if it's a test knit, um, and that's about the only time I swatch. So this is a test knit, so I swatched, and I just wanted to show you why you should swatch. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. And um, I tried several different um, DKs that um, I had in my stash. So I'll just show you, maybe this is a good vision. These are the three DKs I tried, all in the same needle size. I did end up, I used the appropriate needles I think it was a 4.5 so this was cotton 100% cotton held together um two strands held together this was Rowan Murdale now okay I have a wee I have a wee edge on this so that's but it's still you know these are blocked as well you know it's still a few stitches out and then this is the one I went for this is the woolly knit that I actually knit it in so just to show you if if you're in doubt about what's the point of a swatch, what, sh what is the um, point of getting your gauge, maybe you just fly by the seat of your pants, which I fully admit I do. And probably one of the other reasons I like knitting shawls is I never do a, God's, a gauge swatch for shawls. I just knit until there's no wool left. Um, and But just that's just that was a very good visual of, of the difference um, in the different yarns. And um, if you really do want a good fit, um, definitely swatch, especially if it's for somebody else or um, you're not too sure but just that was a very good visual so there you go so that's my finished objects <laughs> 33 minutes in sorry about that um and i think yes that's everything that i finished this this well supposedly this month at this rate of going or maybe maybe i'll fit another finished object in before the end of the month we get a wee drink hope you're having a cup of tea or coffee or you've got your um craft project or you stop and start and watch me another day <laughs> so whips okay whips what will we start with well you know that my mum had a birthday um last month and i uh, was knitting her something that turned out to be a disaster right pattern wrong yarn anyway 
And when she heard that, I hadn't told her I was doing it, but when she heard that I had knit her something, she um, said, well, um, you know, because that one didn't work out, you wouldn't consider knitting me a cardigan? And she had seen the Mauritian by Isabel Kramer that I was also ripping out. Um, and um, But it was DK and she um, really wanted something maybe finer um, in a four ply. And I think this is a definite case of right pattern, right yarn, right timing, the moon's aligned and it has been an absolute pleasure to knit with. I'll show you this before I muck it up. This is um, my lovely bag from my friend Nikki uh, from Rick Rack Room. And it's one of these, um, looks like a tote. And then it goes right up into a massive big bag. So it's perfect for this. And then you can just fold it down. And she wanted like a royal blue. She said to me, I well, forgot to say last time, she said to me, and I was like, is it's like a luxury fiber? Is, could I get something you know, with silk in it? I thought, oh, right, okay. And I just happened to go into my woolly beater and um, lovely Sarah said, was think, would this be any use to you? And it had silk in it. It was a four ply and it was royal blue and it has been an absolute pleasure to knit with. So I'll show you the yarn first. Um, or the tags at least. So it's Regia Silk Four Ply. And it is, sorry, my nose is so itchy. Colour 56. They don't do colourways, but it's a lovely royal blue sort of French navy kind of. So that's Regia Silk. I've knit, I knit um, a shawl in this before. And again, it was lovely to, really lovely in your hands. Beautiful sheen off it. And I have finished the body. So the night out um cardigan is by hohi logatelli put a picture up i'm right in the center of the screen today which is a bad, bad move <laughs> maybe should put it here and i have finished the body and let me see how i do this without dropping it on the floor so again this won't be easy to show but i have finished the whole body oh dear me sorry You can see the pattern, it's not lovely. And it's a bit wrinkled because it's obviously been done the lovely um, rib at the bottom. This is it's like going to be a bit purple, but that's probably right, maybe. Anyway, she loves it. I sent her a birthday card with a strand of the um, yarn in it to show her. She lives in Ireland, obviously, and I live over in England. But you can get the gist of it and it's the best bit about it is you knit the um uh button band my words today are terrible you knit the button band as you go which is great so on this side i've marked all the buttonholes as i've done them i think you can see maybe if i put my arm in it so that do i think you can see the the lovely lace and obviously that'll block away out lovely pattern so <clears throat> i would say so as i move on to sleeve island <laughs> i would like to think that there would be great progress but this is four ply yarn sorry trying to get this so i can show you not going to be any good um thumbnails this week Anyway, you get the gist. Um, and then these these sleeves are on, um, well, they're not on waist, they're on cables so that I can just pick up and knit and then you, you'll just pick up stitches there. Um, but yes, I was saying, this is four ply yarn, fingering yarn, and it's on three millimeter needles. <laughs> so it is a labor of love. But as I say, it is divine to work with. I recommend it highly. Um, and I think my mum will really love it. Um, it's nice and delicate. You can wear it under a coat. I think it's gorgeous. Um, you would expect a beautifully written pattern by Hohe. She's an absolute genius when it comes to pattern writing. And um, I just am so impressed with the yarn too. Sorry, Russell, Russell. I just show you the actual ball. There is something to be said about not having to cake it up as well. <laughs> so there you go. Silk four ply and um i'd say i'll still have a bit of that left because i have um 
this much left and I'm just about to start the sleeves so I can't imagine I'll use all that much so that'll hopefully be an FO the next time you see me and I will not sure what to do about the buttons because sometimes buttons are a very personal choice and um, maybe see what my mum wants to choose we have um, arranged to go to Ireland in the summer <sighs> whether it works out or not <laughs> I'm losing hope um, and um, we will cross paths and that uh, we're they're going to come and stay here and look after our wee dog and house sit and we're going to go um to their house and use that as a base in in northern ireland so um but we'll cross paths for a few days each end and just on my on my bag i've just put one of my wee labels that lovely jeanette and and tim did for me Ugh, stupid um from crafty craig's um, creations it just says cardigan so there you go that's that then um i do have another mindfulness shawl on the go this is my handbag knitting in my favoritist bag from hannah ruth loves to knit and um it is this crazy fun well i think it's fun um colorway <laughs> and this is 100 percent cotton I have quite a few, well not quite a few, I have a couple of these um, sort of snazzy 100% cottons and I think I might do them for these mindfulness shawls because it's just be so lovely and cool in the summertime. And this is from one of my favourite dyers, Rainbow Fusions and it's Autumn Sunset, 100% organic cotton and she was doing a really good deal for three, oh they were less than £10 each so a um, while ago there so um, I have a few of those in my stash and they're far too nice to use for dishcloths or anything like that and it's got my of course my favourite bright yellow so I've been quite muted with everything and so I thought I needed a wee pop of colour so that's another mindfulness shawl I think I confused some people by saying it was mindless sniff, mindless shawl but because it's so easy to knit but it is called the mindfulness shawl and that'll be that'll continue in my um handbag then I have um, a labour of love again. Um, this is in my bag I got a long time ago from Bird Street Yarn, and which is now, no, yeah, Bird Street UK, which is now Bird Street Yarn. And Claire made these bags a long time ago. And it's got the most biggest bag in the world for a small project. It's only one skein. Sorry, there's rustling because I've been keeping it in a plastic bag inside the bag. And I'll put a picture up here and it's the Tidal Wave Shawl by Perrin Yarns and it is gorgeous but you know whenever you say you know it's late and you know you should go to bed and you just think just one more row do not do it do not do it because you'll end up staying up an extra not an extra hour to fix the mistake of the one more row yes but it's coming along Remember, if you watched last week, I showed you this beautiful yarn and you can see that I didn't have to, did indeed have to rip it out. I've even got the yarn in a yarn cosy because it is, um, let me see if I can, sorry for the rustling. Where did I put the, Let's just get that out. There was what I'm looking for. Perrin yarns and it is Heart's Desire and it is 50% silk and 50% baby camel. It is ridiculously beautiful. Tranquil lace. Well, I'll tell you, last night I wasn't tranquil. I was anything but tranquil. And um, I just wanted to knit one more row because I was really flan along. It's only an eight, eight row repeat. It's very, very simple to remember. Real TV knitting. It's It's great. And despite my overthinking of it at the start, and I thought we were getting it all wrong, it's really moving along. Bear in mind though it is lace and it's on three millimeter toothpicks. Um, I've just been chugging along, chugging along, chugging along until last night and I dropped a stitch. <laughs> and I couldn't work out where I dropped it, couldn't work out how I had I could um bring it back up. So I had to go back down about 10 rows and I had to individually each stitch go down because I couldn't work out how to rip it out and go down 10. But it's sorted now. I have it done. I learned my lesson. No, I won't learn my lesson. I'll still do that one more row. And this is where I've got to so far. So 
I was about here, I think. Now I put I've put progress markers in it, but I'm really scared that they're going to um you see one there that they're going to pull because it is lacy, lacy, lacy um spider web. You can see it is taking shape. It should be look like that. Um it is taking shape, but if you've knit with lace before, you know it looks like an old dishcloth until you until you um block it and stretch it. But you can see it definitely is doing the right thing and um i hope i hope i hope i've corrected the mistake as i've come down I'm knitting on straight needles which is far better than the circular needles because i lost the tension when i when it went on to the cords um but <laughs> dear when you're away from straight needles for a while they're they're clumsy to me now i get them stuck in the chair i get them stuck on my sleeve i get them stuck under my armpit <laughs> too much information but I think you can see the gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And I say, look, looks like nothing until, look, looks like nothing. But it'll just bloom beautifully. And I am halfway through. I would have been more than halfway through if I didn't have to tink back 10 or 12 rows last night and I paid attention and did a little. But yes, I've used about 50% 50, 50 of the yarn so hopefully i'll not say this will be finished now this is not for me this is a gift for someone has asked me to do it and um i part of me wishes i'd never said yes but part of me is loving it absolutely loving it and the I get, obviously the yarn is oh, just if you could you have to feel it it's just beautiful and again this was on show at um one of the yarn shows we went to and um so many people just fell in love with it so we'll keep on chugging away at that at least we can see some progress. Um, I don't know if you can see, maybe. Anyway, hopefully it'll, one day I'll just go, look at this beautiful thing. And um, yes, it's definitely a labour of love. So I was at one point knitting on three millimetres for the cardigan, three millimetres for this, and the socks 2.5. So <laughs> it was a bit much some days, but you know, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get it done. And the person who it's going to will be thrilled, hopefully hopefully thrilled and um it's been it's been a good experience as i said before i've knit loads of lace i love lace but i've never actually knit in lace weight yarn and it's definitely um just a different experience but can't say enough good things about the actual yarn and it's lovely and then finally for oops, um this time is um i have started the wedding shawl that i showed you the yarn that came my lovely friend nikki who bought me the um Project Bag is getting married in October and um, she asked me to knit um, the Fen, Sprites Fen shawl by Curious Handmaid, who's Helen Stewart, in white yarn. So it's always also in a plastic bag inside the, <laughs> the Project Bag. So I'm trying not, try not rustle. You know Helen's um, patterns if you've knit them before. If she does row by row instructions. So this, just very quickly, this is what um, I've got so far. And it's just will be it's so squishy. There's the option of lace or fingering. Thankfully, Nikki, Nikki picked the fingering. <laughs> and it is going to be gorgeous. It's a beautiful pattern to knit. It is on down. It's got stilene in it. I don't know if you can see that. The sparkle, can you? Doesn't always come. No, you can't. Doesn't always come up on camera. And I have two balls of it from, again, um, Nikki bought the yarn and sent it to me. Uh, giddy yarns and it's just a uh, super wash merino 20% nylon um 5% super silver stellina and there's no color weight name it's just white and it is knitting up beautifully sorry and that's just in a bag that I have had for years and years and years um I got when I lived up in Scotland and um, I just thought it was good for this because I wanted it with a zip and everything so that it's clean it's not not in the elements and I will be working away on that. She's not getting my to October, but I wanted to get it started and not have to worry about whether it was going to be done in time or not and get it blocked and everything. And uh, yeah, so that's my four whips that I'm knitting. Yes, Night Out Cardigan, Mindfulness Shawl, uh, Tidal Wave and Sprites Fan Shawl. So, and two of them are gifts. So um, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Now we're... 49 minutes already but I did want to mention a couple of other podcasts that I um, love to watch and I've mentioned quite a few at the, at the start of the the um 
the session but um two podcasts that i watch that are smaller podcasts but i really look really enjoy them and just the just um feel like you're having a a, a cup of tea with them or uh, sitting knitting in their in their living room and one is the mouses makes knitting podcast and that's amanda jane and she podcasts weekly and maybe maybe mine would be shorter if i podcasted weekly but she's from england and um she has two mad cats but I just really enjoy it. She knits with all range of wool from, from you know, bargain basement, the bargain shop, as she says, right up to, to hand dyed or whatever. And she's very honest about her knits, although I do think that she puts herself down a wee bit. I think she's she's um got a lot of talent. She she does all different types of things. And um yeah, I really enjoy watching her. Um so check her out. And then another one um is uh Karma's a Stitch. Now I only came across Karma's a Stitch. Uh, because she bought something from a D-stash that I was doing and she's in America and her, uh, Tonya is her name and her lovely son Anthony and I'm not sure how many years ago now but Anthony had a terrible fall at work and he's um, he had a traumatic brain injury and was traveling for some treatment and the lady beside him on the plane was knitting and he wanted he thought this would be amazing and probably very very good for when he was re rehabbing and all the rest of it so they started a podcast together and Anthony just had a birthday there, he was 28, so belated, happy belated birthday to Anthony. And just to see their relationship between mother and son, and obviously Anthony's life's totally changed from maybe what he had planned, um, whatever, many years ago when he had this awful accident. But he's knitting away on a hat, he's learning lots of things. Um, Tonya just finished, now it wasn't in this episode, I think it was the one before, these most out of this world shawl, lace shawl you have ever seen. I mean it was it, it must have the patience of a saint and um, i just enjoy watching them and uh the things now they um um tonya is the one who arranges you might have heard uh, quite a few podcasters talk about the cast on party and she arranges that so she has plenty of cast ons um that she's still knitting away on so that's um mouses makes knitting podcast and karma's a stitch and then the last one that doesn't need any any um recommendation for me i'm sure you all know her but i've just been watching a lot of her recently and it, it's the case pod from lovely Kay from um sweden and i got to know her a little bit um just one night on a zoom and um, she is also has the patience of a saint because she does a swedish version and an english version and like sam who do, who, who does his podcast in a, not in his first language i take my hat off because I can just about string a sentence together in my own language, never mind speaking another language in front of a lot of people. And Kia does everything. She spins. She's got a beautiful way about it. That Swedish, um, uh, Nordic, beautiful um, aesthetic that they all have. And um, she spins, she weaves, she weaves, she crochet she knits she does everything and she t she presents her podcast from her greenhouse not this rubbish background and so go and check out Kia um to see just something different and I always really really enjoy her podcast too right I have a wee tiny bit of incoming now um and that I just want to um share with you and it is um well first of all you know what I know I have an obsession with donkeys and I saw on the Jibby Roos um, Instagram site that she had made a project bag with donkeys in the front of it. So I had, I just had to jump on it. And um, it is mahoosive, absolutely mahoosive. Look at this. <laughs> Are they just? And if you saw the bit in the podcast that I talked about donkeys that come out at Easter, they have indeed got the crosses on their backs. But look at these characters. And it is, it's an 8 to 10 skein. So I'll have to get a big pro, big project on the go. And this, including postage, was well under £20. And uh, I just think for a handmade, it's like linen or canvasy. And then, oh, well, this is this. Look at this. Beautiful uh, lined with pockets. Remind me a bit of deck chair, you know, so the donkeys on the beach in the good old days. And it's a drawstring and I look forward to putting my project. You could put a small child in it, never mind a project. And these two characters will have to name them, won't I? Um, you ha may have realised that I get these obsessions and I can't let them go. But that came in this week. I have a, ch have a um, look at uh, Jibby Roo's Sews 
on um, Etsy and um, she has amazing po from pouches, purses right up and she's doing yarn now too which is gorgeous as well. Then the other thing um, that I just wanted to, to share was um, I got a skein of yarn. Now I got another thing but it's for the um, giveaways and I'll show you that whenever I show the um, actual giveaway prizes. But this is the skein of yarn I got from Attic Spin Dye. Now, if you've watched this podcast before, you know I love, I can't get the sun shining in now. Of course, it's sunny now. Um, Angela and Andy are supporters of a lot of podcasts, but they've certainly supported me. And I've been meaning to buy this yarn for quite a while. Um, and then I realised it was, it's for um, EDS awareness. Now, I have mentioned EDS before on this podcast, sort of maybe last year sometime. And um, Angela suffers from EDS which is Ehler, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And la this month is, is EDS Awareness Month. Now you'll see a wee zebra on that. And they talk about this zebra um, disease because, and I've written this down, I don't want to get it wrong. Um, sometimes doc doc doctors are trained to um, look for the obvious. But sometimes when you hear hoof beats, it really is a zebra. And EDS can take a long time. I think, Angela, it took 10 years for you to be diagnosed. And it's um, flexible joints, but not in a good way. And stretchy, fragile skin and pain and um, problems with mobility and gut pro all the sorts. But they, then they diagnose different things, but it's very hard to get the diagnosis. And they're just trying to bring awareness to this um illness I suppose and there's no cure but there's some ways to make it livable and one of the ways is um crafting and I know Angela really enjoys her crafting and it keeps her mind it, it gives you a foggy mind this is what keeps her mind active her hands active and um they go to a lot of shows so if you're at the shows um do look in at them um but um I just um, wanted to get this just to support their their cause because they've been so good to me don't know what I'm going to do with it beautiful I mean look can't go wrong but every time I see the sweet zebra I just think you know there's maybe other people out there suffering and maybe just a bit of awareness go and google it there's plenty of stuff online about it go and google it and you never know maybe somebody you know or some of your symptoms could be leading to this and you could get a diagnosis much much quicker and this yarn is on their site at Expindi if you want to just go over and get a beautiful skinny yarn and raise awareness they have other things too they've got um I can't remember there's a wee, there's there's a actual um bit on their Etsy shop and you can click on it and it'll drop down and show you the EDS awareness but they're a lovely lovely couple and I was very happy to support this because it's a lovely lovely yarn as well so there you go so that was the two things that came in this week um yes and the other one was for the giveaway so I'm not um I've already thanked that person in 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 person so to speak <laughs> so Oh my goodness, I have run through that and I'm already at an hour. Oh dear me, sorry about that. Listen, um, you know I always finish my podcast with a wee, wee thought that's on my heart from the scripture. I'm a Christian um, um, and I just feel that this is an opportunity to share the amazing news of the gospel. But I know that's not for everybody. I know many, many people watch my podcast just for the knitting and I'm thrilled you're here. Um, uh, you want to stay on just for this once? Sure. <laughs> You're more than welcome. But if you're leaving me now, um, I will say goodbye. I'll say God bless. And um, I hope you have a great couple of weeks. I am really going to try and um, podcast a wee bit sooner next time just because they're getting so lengthy with the amount of stuff um, that I have to ramble on about. Um, I think it was Selma said that I have the gift of the gab and she's definitely right um, from the little Big Nits podcast. And uh, But anyway, it's all to say that um, have we think about the shawl, Cal? Have we look in your ravelry? Um, see if you've any in your list that you've just been needing the kick to, to, um, to cast on and um, just stay safe, look after yourselves and keep on knitting till I see you again. All right, bye. And for those of you who are staying, thank you so much for a start. I want to do a little um, series. don't know if that's a series on um, something. And I want to do a few wee uh, points each time over the next few podcasts. And what I want to ask you this morning, I always have a question for you, don't I? Wanna, wanna, what I want to ask you this morning is, do you worry? What a stupid question, Ruth, you're saying. Do, what a stupid question. Well, I think... I know there's some 
guys that watch this podcast um but i think as women um is the majority of people who watch this podcast and i think as women we are nearly hardwired to worry aren't we it's it's nearly on our nature that you know we're worriers and you know um if i take my husband for an example you know we could be talking about the most in-depth things you know finances future whatever um i will lie awake at night worrying about it and he will just roll over and go to sleep <laughs> do you have men in your life like that and um so i think we are as women just preconditioned to to worry and obviously looking at the world events <laughs> It is worrying. It is absolutely worrying that that, you know, what's around the corner, you know, all of the things that have happened in the last even two or three months, you know, the cost of living, da, 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 da. you know, uh, you know, if you turn your news on at all, even if you're a very laid back, non anxious person, there's 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 points to worry about. But, you know, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter six, verse thirty four. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Now that's all well and good, <laughs> but if we as human and again as women worry, and I, you know, we live in a different world to when I grew up. You know, I was able to go and play. I was able to go off on my bike. I used to go around to my friends' houses. Mommy didn't really know where I was all the time, um, and I maybe she did worry, but you know, um, it. Whereas I put my kids on the school bus and I worry are they going to be bullies or they're going to be, you know, they I I. I drive them places instead of them getting the bus because I worry for them. I, you know, it, it's just a different world that they live in. Um, I signed up for a parenting thing for teenagers because I need to know what they're into. I need to know how I can be there for them. And it's just a worry if you have um, kids in this world, you know. And it's so sad because I had a great childhood, whereas I know I put restrictions on my children that I wouldn't let them do some of the things that I, I was able to do. Maybe you worry about your family, finances, health, or a whole host of things. But you know, I don't know your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I do know a God who, who knows your life. Excuse me, I'm going to take some water here. I do know a God who knows your life. And I want to share four things over the next wee while that if you know and love the Lord, you don't have to worry about. I'm trying here. <laughs> so the first one I want to share with you is you should never worry about being forsaken. It's horrible being forgotten, isn't it? You know, maybe you're at a time in your life where the kids have flown the nest. I know many, many people have gotten in touch with me to say that loved one, they lost loved ones during the pandemic. And maybe you, everyone else seems to be getting on with their life and you're just sitting feeling very very forgotten or overlooked or lonely maybe your family's all grown up and moved away or you've lost loved ones as i say or you can be lonely in a crowd you know if you have christ in your heart and life he promises that he will never leave you or forsake you even in the bleakest times he's there with you now even if you're not a church goer even if you're not a person of faith you know about the little footprints um poem where it shows just the one set of footprints in the sand and and it talks about how you thought you were alone but actually God was carrying you at that time um through your troubles and you know I've said this many times on the podcast but over 365 times in the bible we're told that he will never leave us or forsake us this is precious precious promise for every day of the year and the lord himself goes before John Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you or forsake you do not be afraid do not be discouraged Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have for he has said I will never leave you nor forsake you Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So there is just 
four or just four out of 365. I challenge you to find a few more. These are just a reminder in case we forget. You know, when I qualified as a nurse um, in 1993, um, I moved to London to get work. There was no work in Northern Ireland and a group of us moved to the streets of gold in London to get work. And I came from, you know, a big friend group. I came from a boyfriend. I had a big circle of friends. I was living in nurses' homes before, the great crack we had there. And I remember the feeling of loneliness when I moved to London. I was in the most populated city. There was people everywhere, but I felt an absolute physical pain of loneliness. I was only 20 um, and I just remember that it was almost like a physical ache. I was so lonely and I wasn't a Christian very long. I wasn't saved very long, but I remember very, very vividly just having to fall on those verses, those promises and just saying, Lord, you promised me that I would never be alone. I would never feel forsaken. I would never feel forgotten. And that those verses became very true to me. And I felt a very powerful surround him very powerfully surrounding me with his love. But you might be saying, Ruth, you don't know my life. You don't know the circumstances, and I don't know, but God does. And his promises are there if we read them. And I hope today that you'll get a bit of encouragement in that. That no matter how you feel, you are never forsaken, you're never forgotten. And I want to go on and tell you three more promise, three more things that you should never worry about in future podcasts. But just today, just remember, we should never worry about being forsaken or forgotten. God is there, God cares and God loves you. But, you know, the, I always say to these verses, you need to bring them into your heart. You know, you need to pin them up on your wall, put them on your bathroom mirror write them in your journal so you won't forget them on those hard days. Now I hope this has just been a wee tiny nugget this morning to encourage you to keep going on. Keep, keep, keep going on. And if you don't know the Lord as your saviour, if you would like to know more about um the wonderful um our wonderful saviour, please get in touch. Email ruthlovetonit at gmail.com if you'd like me to pray for you, if you would like to just understand more of what our faith is. I am more than happy to um, answer your questions. If I get, as I said before, if I don't know the answers, I'll get somebody else to help me with them. I'm not, I'm just living day by day as well as everybody else. And um, if you have knitting questions, if I can help you with them too, let me know, get in touch. But that's it for today. Um, I think I need to go and lie down in a dark room. <laughs> I hope you've got some wee nugget out of that, either from knitting or about the Bible. There's some really, really good quotes there from quotations there from the Bible that you could go and look up yourselves. And um, I just pray that you'll keep safe and that you'll um, just enjoy some time to just calm, time to knit and just think on these things. And until I see you again, just, yeah, just keep on knitting.